He joins Jack Nicklaus and Jack Nicklaus alone as players to win both a U.S. Amateur and U.S. Open at the same site. Rarified air, Matthew Fitzpatrick, your United States Open champion by one. 22 to one heading into the week. And those are winning tickets if you're holding them. Fitzy in the winner's circle at Brookline. Don't take it from me. They were there for it all. CBS Sports Golf analyst Kyle Porter and Rick Gaiman standing by at Brookline. Gentlemen, Matt Fitzpatrick putting on a Sunday master class. KP, the intensity came through the screen, no doubt about it. But give us a sense of what it was like out there over the last four or so hours. Yeah, I picked up Fitzpatrick on the 10th hole and, and followed him all the way home. And uh, Rick, I was shocked by this is somebody who I, I think we've thought about uh, both uh, in his play and his sort of demeanor as being, uh, I'll use the word meek, just sure. sort of mild mannered, not a, kind of a big bopper off the tee, not a ton of power. And this week was transformative. I mean, he's he's out driving DJ. Uh, he's he's fist pumping uh, the the putt on. Uh, I guess it was 13 for uh, uh, for birdie there to kind of to kind of uh, go ahead as Alatoris. I mean, I, I was I was shocked, Joe, uh, just by how much presence Matthew Matt Fitzpatrick had uh, on this Sunday at the U.S. Open. He's not somebody that we necessarily talking about or that we necessarily talk about a lot as being kind of a big uh, personality or a big presence in the game. But I, I just, I couldn't, I, I was enthralled with, I was so compelled by the way he closed out this tournament, not just from his uh, on play, uh, on course play, uh, but also from the way he just kind of carried himself. Like, yeah, I'm going to go out and win this thing. He was walking putts in. It was extraordinary, Rick. I, I, I don't, uh, I, I didn't envision that coming into the week, but it was really, really fun to watch on Sunday. He certainly let his play do the talking on Sunday, and there was a lot of emotion from the Fitzpatrick camp right after, uh, after he clinched this thing, and I, and I think it's well deserved because this is a guy who has been getting better and better almost every week, every month, every year. You know, he's gotten so much longer off the tee. That's something that we've talked about all week long, and it wasn't with protein shakes and workout videos. <laughs> it was just with hard work, sweat, and speed training, and now he is able to compete uh, with some of the longer hitters on tour. And we've talked about it so often that when things get really difficult out there, that's when someone like Matt Fitzpatrick is really going to shine. And he's going to do it his own way, right? He's going to do the cross-handed chipping. He's going to uh, try to outdrive guys that are much bigger and brawnier than him. It, it, this is such a well-deserved first PGA yeah. Tour victory. I'm so glad it was a major championship. Yeah. yeah, first PGA Tour victory. He's the first guy since Graham McDonald in 2010 to get his first career victory at the U.S. Open. McDowell doing it at uh, Pebble Beach, and here it's Fitzpatrick getting it done at Brookline, the site of his U.S. Amateur triumph as well, guys. And he did so against the best players in the world. This was not a meek leaderboard, if you will. The Zalatoruses were out and bopping. Rom was there heading into the final round. You had guys like Scotty Scheffler, the number one player in the world. Rick, to do it in the face of these players at this place tells you what about Matt Fitzpatrick moving forward? Uh, it tells you that he's the real deal. I mean, we were sitting in the media center and just saying, can you believe this leaderboard? L yeah. Look at all these guys at the top. I don't know who's going to win it, but whoever wins it is going to earn it. And this is a situation where, you know, if Matt Fitzpatrick beat up a bunch of guys ranked 150th in the world, maybe he doesn't get the credit he deserves. When you go out and you beat the number one player, when you beat Will Zalatoris, who has, you know, a multiple runner-up finishes in major championships this year, Hideki Matsuyama, Colin Morikawa both made a late charge. This was a golf course that was that was biting back all week long. And Matt, Matt Fitzpatrick's name is at the top of the board, KP. It's, it's even more impressive, and I think this will age really well when we continue to look back at this championship in a couple of months and a couple of years about how strong it actually was. Yeah, I, I think so too. And I, I just, I, I'm, I'm really, you know, it, it's interesting. We came into 2022 talking about, when we talk about major championships, you talk about Fitzpatrick, he, he's been in a lot of them, but he hadn't really contended. And now the last two, the PGA Championship, he thrived. He kind of fell apart on Sunday, but uh, he played really well there for three days. And, and now he wins this one. I was sitting on the 15th tee, uh, Joe. There was a, kind of a long wait there while uh, Zalatoris and Fitzpatrick were um, waiting for the for Keegan Bradley and Sean Rahm, the, the the pairing ahead of them, and I was thinking about how whether or not Fitzpatrick uh, at, at that point I didn't know who was going to win. I kind of thought it was still maybe Zalatoris, maybe Scheffler. I uh, thought it might go to a playoff, but I, I was thinking about how no matter what happened over the last uh, four holes for Fitzpatrick, 15, 16, 17, 18, the way that I, I 
he's the guy that I'm going to think most differently about uh, moving forward in this tournament. Whether he won, whether he lost, no matter what happened, that was my thought as I as I kind of stood there on the 15th tee and started to think about kind of the bigger picture of what this U.S. Open means. So uh, super impressed by him. There was a cool moment. Uh, Rory was actually out there uh, on the 18th green. I don't know if they showed this on television, but he, mm -hmm. he gave him a big hug. Uh, Fitzpatrick could barely, like, speak he could breathe. barely breathe it, it was uh it was a really cool moment that you could tell meant a lot to him and i think will give him uh, a ton of confidence at major championships going forward the bomb at 13 a two shot swing at 15 the iron shot from the bunker at 18 it was fantastic stuff out of our united states open champion matt fitzpatrick let's talk about a little bit of the rest of this leaderboard because will zalatoris the elusive pga tour win in major still out in front of him as he's not able to make that putt to force the playoff at the 72nd hole zalatoris nine starts at majors six top tens Two heartbreaking runner-ups over this last month of major play, guys. And for the he's just got to keep putting himself there crowd, well, ask 2014 Ricky Fowler if that it's going to happen, it's got to happen, ever comes to fruition. Will Zalatoris still looking for it. What is the limiting factor right now, KP? Because we so quickly want to say it's the putter, but he made some big putts here on Sunday as well. Yeah, I, I don't know that there's a limiting factor. I think it's just a matter of uh, of, of getting beat. You know, when, you, when you're in a playoff at the PGA, when you lose by one uh, at the U.S. Open, it, it's difficult to turn to any one thing and say, well, if he improves that, uh, then he's going to win mm -hmm. a, a major championship. I think it's just continuing to put yourself in, in that position, right? You think about... You know what if what if JT makes one more bogey at Southern Hills? What if right. what if Matt Matt Fitzpatrick uh, hits one poor shot uh, here at uh, the U.S. Open? Will Zalatoris could have won two in a row. I mean, he he has to be Rick. I think among. Uh, the favorites uh, for the Open Championship at St. Andrews. And, and, and by among the favorites, I mean, he, he needs to be like a top five favorite going in uh, to that Open Championship because of his play uh, at the first couple of majors of the year. You do worry a little bit about the, the Louis Oosthuizen uh, runner-up right. slam type thing. <laughs> uh, but I, I do think uh, Zalatoris, as well as Fitzpatrick, he kind of joined Fitzpatrick in that super intensity, great presence mm -hmm. coming home. I, I was really impressed seeing him up close on the course today. The limiting factor is is variance that that's yeah. what we're we're seeing here he's played well enough to win one two hey maybe even three of these major championships and i will remind remind you kp um having a resume completing the runner-up grand slam a lot of guys would love that resume yeah. right to be able to do something like that and i think it's just uh yeah a matter of time as you kind of uh, as you kind of alluded to there joe because he was what a quarter inch away from getting into a, a playoff here at the country club and even when we talk about his putting stroke, especially on those shorter putts, and it, it doesn't look pretty, it, it tends to get the job done. And it's a situation where he gained strokes on Saturday, KP. He putted well on Sunday. I, I never really said this moment's too big for him or it's getting out of getting out of hand. Yeah, I, I got a good one here for you, Joe. I, I just thought of this as we were uh, talking here. Uh, Will Zalatoris, four strokes from three majors. So Oof. he's four strokes from having... Uh, essentially Jordan Spieth's major championship right. career, which is, that's a stat we always throw out there with Ustazen, <laughs> yeah. but now it's true of Zalatoris as well. He's positioned himself as a big game hunter, just unable to get one for the wall just yet. We'll see if he can do it at the Open Championship. I'm in full agreement that he should be amongst the favorites there, guys. Uh, when we're speaking about disappointment in that same breath, Rory McIlroy's week has to be touched upon here with Kyle Porter as well. KP, <laughs> really, really just framing it amongst this putting week. Led the field in strokes game putting for players that made the cut this week. For Rory to squander that type of putting performance where it's usually the inverse and it's the putter that's not there and that's his limiting factor, how do you really reconcile with Rory's week as he continues to put himself in the conversation? Well, I'd actually like to throw it over to Rick because he's got the stat on, on uh, how many times Rory's led the field in putting. Yeah, that's right. So if you include uh, this one, so basically his top 20 putting performances, he's gone on to win 15 of them, Kyle. Wow. So he usually does not squander a very good putting week. That is a, that's a tough scene for me right here. <laughs> uh, after getting my hopes up on Friday night, Saturday night, you know, you thought that he might do it. I mean, listen, I talked to Rory on, uh, what was that, I think Friday night, and just talked to him about uh, why does he feel freedom at these major championships all of a sudden, or does he? And he said, yeah, he does for the first time in a long time because he has so much confidence in his game. So is it disappointing? It is, for sure. I, I think we talk about open championship favorites. I mean, Rory's had a ton of success at St. Andrews. Uh, he's played really, really well there, both on the European tour and at major championships. 
Uh, and I think he should be the favorite going into the Open Championship. Now, does that mean it's going to materialize? No. And and I think you, uh, it, it, he's got to be so frustrated to to kind of uh, kick away uh, what was one of the great putting performances of his career because he wasn't that great off the tee this right. week. You know, he he, he didn't have, uh, especially on the weekend, he didn't have his best stuff off the tee. Whether he was hitting driver, hitting irons, whatever he was doing off the tee, he had that kind of left miss going on quite a bit so it is frustrating but if you add him up uh, over the majors this year I, I haven't done it yet but I imagine him and Zalatoris are one two in terms of aggregate major score which doesn't get you any trophies <laughs> but I think it will uh, mean that you take confidence into the open championship it, it, it's a gift and a curse to be Rory yeah. McIlroy right he's played three major championships this year he's got a top 10 a yellow a yellow box on Wikipedia in, <laughs> in all of them unfortunately that is not how we grade Rory McIlroy we get grade him on wins and we grade him on major championship wins and we just keep the the count or the, the the timer going right. It's been eight years since he last won his major championship, and we're going to roll into to St Andrews, and we're going to add another month to that to that timer, and that's that's how we grade Rory. So unfortunately, Joe, uh, it's a gift and a curse when you are uh, held to that standard. Yeah, the expectations, no doubt, are there. Our friends at Caesar Sportsbook positioning McElroy as the odds-on favorite to win the Open Championship, currently going off at ten to one. Buy it if you like it. Uh, before we go here, guys. I want you to speak to the greater narrative throughout the week and how it evolved. It seemed like four days ago, all anyone could talk about was live golf and these guys playing back at an event with all the PGA Tour players. But this course, this tournament, these moments really shifted that focus over the final, let's say, 48 hours, KP. Yeah, I was thinking about this as, as we kind of finished up. It was chaotic. And again, this probably came through on TV. I was in the middle of a scrum on 18. They broke contain on the 18th hole, as usually <laughs> happens at major championships, which is one of the better parts of a major championship when everybody kind of runs up behind the green or uh, follows the players up toward the green. And I was thinking, uh, Joe, about how we started the week with a Phil Mickelson press conference. That was kind of the first thing that happened uh, this week. And it displayed to what to me is the worst parts of professional golf just the um uh, the kind of the underbelly mm -hmm. of professional golf we talk about money and uh, playing exhibitions for money and who's paying who and who's leaving and all this stuff and then you end the week to contrast it with the the best part of professional golf which is uh, a major championship with two guys duking it out for their first ever uh, pga tour win and major championship win and i i you know, Matt Fitzpatrick makes, what, $3.15 million for winning the, the major championship. I guarantee you he'd give it all back if it meant he could still ho hold that U.S. Open trophy. So it was a it was a huge contrast, a huge juxtaposition, Joe, from uh, Monday with that Phil Presser and then what everybody was feeling uh, on Sunday, Sunday evening here at Brookline with Matt Fitzpatrick coming up to 18th, hugging his dad on Father's Day and uh, everybody uh, kind of surrounding him as he took home his first major. I think it was important that this – Ha, you know, this being our first major championship since we saw a live golf event played for the first time, I, I think is important because money can buy a lot of things, but it can't buy history, at least not immediately, because what we have here is we are steps away from, you know, Francis Wee Metz child, childhood home, right? And we are looking, or we're watching Billy Foster, who is uh, Matt Fitzpatrick's caddy, finally get a major championship over after 40 years. And there's just this built in history to these events and to these championships that these guys are just absolutely willing to do anything to capture and to add that trophy to the mantle. And I think that um, that was my biggest takeaway from this week, being out here on the ground, seeing the way that uh, these guys are treating this championship and treating this game in a way that I, I cannot imagine it could be done many other places in the world. Well, it was fitting that the man who won it here in 2013, the U.S. Amateur, wins the U.S. Open in 2022. It's time now for your Bonobos Perfect Fit. Usually I ask you guys who fits next week's ask, but we are in the moment here. Kyle Porter, how are you going to fit this one into your mental Rolodex when you remember the 2022 U.S. Open? Uh, that's a great question, Joe. <laughs> I'm, I'm so not ready to talk about the Travelers Championship. I want to stay in the U.S. <laughs> Open moment for longer. Listen, this I, I don't know that this is going to go down as a um, – you think about – like 2015 Masters or 2015 U.S. Open with a with with Spieth as the winner, or like a Rory type winner, or even a DJ type winner who's kind of an all time at least current great. Uh, I don't know that Matt Fitzpatrick is going to end up being that guy, but in terms of just pure tournaments, 
It's up near the top for me in, in terms of the way uh, just the golf kind of played out. I, I thought Tory was really good last year, and this one was right there with it, just in terms of uh, two guys in Zalatoris and Matt Fitzpatrick who, who kind of proved themselves to be kind of kind of big dogs on Sunday uh, going back and forth. It, it, it's, a, it's a thrill for me uh, to be uh, – to, for both of us to be here and to see that – uh, up close um, w when you have not again not necessarily maybe an all-time champion but uh, one of the best uh, events and tournaments that we've seen in the last several years. Yeah, and I think, it, it. you know, when we look back at this in a couple of years, will it be Matt Fitzpatrick's first major championship of many? We don't know the answer to that, to that question. Would it have had a bigger historical context if Scotty Scheffler or Colin Morikawa or even Rory McIlroy won it? Sure, absolutely. But with the state of our game uh, kind of splitting right now, and there's a lot of questions that we don't have answers to, to get a championship like this where some of the biggest names in the best players were in contention through the entirety of this event, literally down to the last putt hit by Will Zalatoris on, on 18 green. That's what we needed. And, yeah. and it's going to feel really good for a really long time. And I'm just excited to be here. <laughs> Rick's excited to be here. <laughs> and Rick Gaiman, we're excited to have you guys there. A tip of the cap and a golf clap for some outstanding coverage throughout the entire week from Brookline. We thank you guys for doing the hard work for us, but best bets are coming and they're coming soon. And they're coming to you on the First Cut Podcast. Download, subscribe, and enjoy the premier pod in all of golf as Kyle Porter, Rick Gaiman, and the whole crew take you under the ropes and into the action week in and week out on tour, including a recap of the thrilling 2022 United States Open. Download and subscribe to the First Cut Podcast. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.